Nigeria. Hey, Ma, are you ready? <laughs> no, hold on, Magdalene. I'm going be quickly. Okay. <laughs> All right, welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of the Salon Sports Show. And as usual, I do with Emmanuel. <laughs> and this is not the Max Tribune uh, Sport. Me and Magdalene, where we bring the show to inside the show today. We go um, do post match analysis on the match where Salon plays South Africa as Sierra Leone lost um, the match by four goals to zero. A lot of things they were surround that with regards early preparation as we hear from Coach John Kista where cast the blame for the defeat on early um, late preparation and tired legs of the players and 
as we speak, the team they on their way to Morocco Casablanca for the second friendly match where they will play um Tuesday we will be against DR Congo na Casablanca Morocco. The team they on the way, but um now that um two people not able for fly with the team when uh, the coach Kista and Mohamed Bouyatoué. Um that's good for do with um ticketing where they, they try for fix for them for join the team by tomorrow. So we will bring you um report on that and analysis and also we'll look at the new South Wales African Cup. Um the African Cup 2022 way they organized na Sydney, Australia for African communities. We get the chairman when a Bernard we go tell you more about the competition. And we brought away na Al Haji Mohamed Bokari last week we talked to um be happen for be uh part of the bodybuilding championship na news um na Queensland state who say he happened for win um the rookie um category and um, we will bring you reports on that as Mohammed said for talk to we all the way from Queensland congratulations to um and this plus more where they make the news as we see the Kenyan um roadmaster broke um the record inside the men's marathon also um <laughs> way they're on today we will talk about that but in the meantime make a welcome emmanuel welcome to the show emmanuel magdalene thank you once again to so we us the out there on a kusha on a kaba on a hadu assalamu alaikum god bless you all okay that's uh, emmanuel and um in uh, miss today we have the president for the um <laughs> new south Wales african football um bernard is joining us to talk about this year competition the tournament itself and how they've been preparing to host um the competition which 20 teams will be competing for the ultimate trophy welcome to the show bernard welcome magdalene thanks for inviting us to the show and um how are you emmanuel i'm good i'm good thank you <laughs> uh, okay um, bernard is our guest today so we'll be doing it half Creo, half english <laughs> as we move on <laughs> and please share the live share the live so uh more people go um able for watch and see what we talk about but quick one before we we, we, we come into football let me just um go quick now queensland and talk to mohammed bokari where happen for be the champion for the rookie category where them compete now the queensland state championship yesterday inside the bodybuilding um competition where they be get for host let's just um try for bring and come online and talk to um as we want forget from the man himself how we feel about the event itself and the um build up into that and waiting next for him as a champion now uh good evening and welcome to the show al haji yes um maggie uh, first, how are you thanks 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 uh first of all want to congratulate you for being able to get your first trophy in bodybuilding as a rookie and that is you in the middle, <laughs> the giant, giant man. <laughs> this man transformed from soccer, athletics to volleyball and now bodybuilding. First, tell me what in this win mean for you, Alaji. Yeah, Maggie. Um, this I don't know how I feel. Um, the winning is just like the wall over. Um, because you know, like uh, in the first time getting a goal position is really um thing where you really carry it home with a happiness because sharing stage with people that we if you see they don't be in and um they get more experience definitely this winning are just like a wall over for me okay so um being that you happen for take part in three category but you dominate the rookie um the rookie level so we um waiting inspire you when you be the take part and was it scary being that now be first um competition um maggie for me me that motor man in 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 um all the sport the way i be do i know they get overconfidence even when i feel say i know i dominate because if you take 
any competition for so granted, you they just a result what you know they expect. So um I will definitely be be be, be nervous and uh till uh, tell they call my name for just jump up the stage, that's the time I get confidence because this not you know, not the Africa, you know they run away for yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I was yet nervous, but as soon as I call my name and step up the stage, all the nervousness go. Okay, so Ahmed, now that you don't become a champion, what's next for you inside this sport? Okay, like um, this has been just a qualifier, like I tell you. Um, we get the national where they come in two weeks. So definitely, like, let me see, you can go, go back on straight, straight back to work, straight back to work um, for the nationals. Then after the national, we get a lot of other um, um, shows that where they come up on the ICA. But it is it depends if Mohammed one contest on the ICA or. If I want to move to IFBB, it's not a federation. Okay. Yes. So, but well, this federation, like when I IB, IBFF, it they really take you up to Mr. Olympia. Because IBFF also, you declare for win. You broke card. Once you know that broke definitely that qualifies you for let you partake for okay. go be Mr. Olympia. All right. So, um, you think say you don't um confident enough for move on from the level where you did now for go to a more um tougher level in this sport? Yeah. Maggie, um the confidence yesterday don't build and I'll tell you for sure. Um I don't love this sport more. You know, like a day in that sport I be doing yesterday, not of me, one girl represent. But it represents Sierra Leoneans as a whole. You know how you feel. Like being the only black man yesterday for being among the whole competition was a big proud. And um, the judges, they make the decision for the other class then. But I'll tell you for sure, I'm a winner in the other classes because Hello? Hello, Med. Hello. Oh, I think we get a um, problem with Med in line over there. Uh, Emmanuel. Hello. Yeah, okay, go ahead, Med. Yeah, would they get you? Yeah, so, Maggie, I'll be really happy and um, I don't get more more confidence for that for your head. Okay. So, um, what's in... Um, next for this sport because like you know we know say this sport they exist um been there somebody be the one in a salon but you know the first athlete will not see you don't go compete so you get any intention for create a way where you're able for establish them um, or re-establish a salon for let more people get the opportunity as well for you know represent Sierra Leone yes um okay obviously when I carry her, I start this journey, that will always be my dream. Because when you look at alone, definitely, as you said, the day, but the day has just a name of a sporting. Okay. You know, but you can never feel that a body during the day. Um, day. And Maggie, I'll tell you for so I get that plan for extend that back home because. This night sport, we really, um, they really, I really love, I can tell you, and I for love, I, I, was, I go really love for sure, for see it grow in the country and really benefit a lot of people. All right. Okay. Thank you, Med. We hope for talk to you some other time. Congratulations. And in two weeks' time, we'll definitely talk to you again when you go for the nationals. Yeah, definitely. Thanks very much, Maggie. Thanks, Emmanuel. Go bless you. All right, um.
That's now Mohamed, all the way from Queensland, the Sierra Leonean way competes in the bodybuilding championship yesterday, state championship, and they happened for winning one of the categories and finished fourth, um, respectively, in the remaining two. Emmanuel, uh, last week we talked to Med, and not be a bit confident because it was his first time, but now the confidence level don't grow, and we see the difference in you know. <laughs> in building the, the tension ahead of next um two weeks event where we will take part in. Uh, what do you make up of this development in an athlete will transform from three different sports to the other sports where they do now? Hey, no one's from Magdalene. Thank you for a short a time into this program. And I want to say big congratulations to my brother and Alaji for short and achievements in a new era in a new life in a new sport in a new competition when you don't move into and mostly in life like when people take up a new sport where that they didn't grow up with from childhood it is mostly challenging and especially developing the, the muscular techniques and the timing the strength it's mostly challenging also the mental power in in the sport but for see a brother like just transform into a new sport and become a champion and moving up to the higher stage. For me, it's alarming, it's a wake up call that you're never too old, you're never too young, you're never too lazy, you're never too weak for a change. It's all about the mindset. You need to have like the can do spirit. If you say, yes, I can do this, just focus and do it, the can do spirit. I know people go so much going to shake their head about the can do. <laughs> <laughs> That's vo volleyball, volleyball speed. <laughs> it gets up. And, and exactly that's what he has executed, the can do spirit, like transforming from soccer, volleyball, athletics, and now he's into bodybuilding. It's a big, it's a long, a long way he, he has traveled. And for him to achieve short a dream, it's, it means he has been putting a lot of hard work. So it's a big, it's a big, 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 big signal for, for us and for the Sierra Leone community as a whole and as an African as a whole. Because he didn't only compete there alone as an African. Remember, there are other nationals that yeah. took part in this competition. And for an African to show forth in that big stage, it's a, it's a welcoming news for our community. And we really appreciate what he has done. And I pray that you continue to keep up the good work that he is doing. All right. Um, that's now Emmanuel in reaction on Alaji in, in championship win. All right. That's a big one, winning a state championship. It's a big record for the first time. So we move on and um, we want to congratulate my brother. <laughs> All right. Then um, let's go proper into the show now. And um, in New South Wales, um, they've been organizing a tournament for Africans within the African community representing their countries of origin, although some players will switch nationality <laughs> at some point. <laughs> and it's synonymous with the Sierra Leonean community. Sierra Leone community is so <laughs> players playing in many teams. But today, we have Bernard, who is the chairperson for that committee in respect of organizing that tournament. He has been with them for a very long time and knows the competition very well. And is here to tell us what's the plan for this year. Welcome to the show once more, Bernard. Welcome, Magdalene. Thank you for inviting me to the show. And um, I also extend my greetings to Emmanuel. Okay. So, uh, Bernard, let's start off by um, you telling us the objective of hosting this African Cup in Sydney this year. The main objective has been to unite all Africans here in, in Australia, especially New South Wales and Sydney, to create a spirit for oneness, you know, to also yeah, promote uh, cultural fusion and to get the boys off the streets so that they focus on other things, not focus on illicit activities, and also to give the boys an opportunity to uh, further their careers you know some of these boys they are ambitious talented they want to go very far and the african uh, cup gives them an opportunity or platform to um, keep honing their skills and further their career it, it has now been attracting 
clubs from MPO clubs here in Australia, uh, A-League, and even the outside world, they are now getting interested. So I th the objective is to continue uh, showcasing our talent and getting any boys who are really talented out there to further their careers. All right, um, Bernard. So what's new in this year's tournament? Uh, we have got 20 teams from 16. So that's a very big expansion. We've got women tournament is growing, you know, from year to year. Now I've got six teams of African origin and we have uh, 10 junior teams under 14 and under uh, 16. So that's the most uh, newest thing I can talk about. But besides that, we believe the our athletes are going to dish out a, a lot of excitement and showcase their skills. Okay. So um, talking about the increase in um, number of teams from the juniors to the men's category, although uh, I was told that it has happened before that this competition um, hosted 20 teams, but they cut down to 16. So do you have the capacity to host all these teams? We have the capacity to hold these teams because we uh, talked with our partners, our West, Western Sydney Wanderers, and uh, they said they can help us host this uh, tournament. They've got a lot of fields. This year we'll be using five of the fields. We can use six. So we have the capacity and we've got a lot of other Africans um, in, who want to help with managing. So we are going to get more and more people to come and volunteer and help us to manage this tournament this year. All right. Um, so looking at the tournament itself, it's going every year. And when we look at, um, you know, to hosting such competition, you need funding. How have you been doing with um, regards getting funds to organize this tournament in um, on a yearly basis? Initially, we used to rely on our membership, you know, who just contributed what they could. But uh, because the tournament is growing, we are beginning to attract partners who are bringing in a, a, um, a bit of funding, not much, but they are chipping in with, say, 1,000, 2,000. Yeah, so it's helping a lot. And our partners as well, they're not uh, going to charge us for women and, and juniors. It's just going to give us like a, a donation. So that has helped us a lot to be able to fund this tournament. And plus our financial prudence, we manage the funds in a way that we are very conservative and we account for every cent. We make sure the value is a dollar for dollar. Okay. So let's talk about the the opening ceremony in itself. We understood um, it will be done in one of the biggest match of the season um and um you like you want to take the community to another level like the teams will be showing up in the match between a part glory and that of um, western sydney one as one of your partners um so why changing the the format or bringing in this new challenge Initially, we wanted to do this opening ceremony at uh, Western Sydney Wanderers, and we we're going to manage it ourselves. But our partners felt it's an opportunity for them to come in and help us to have a bigger um, opening ceremony on a bigger stage where it will be live on television, the world will witness it. And um, so we said, okay, we can take this opportunity and grab it by both hands. Since we are not funding it, no cent we are paying and it's a bigger stage so we agreed for them to help us to expose us in such a bigger way so um do you think um this will open another opportunity for the tournament itself or the um event itself what will it, will it look like is it that there will be a match or we're just going no, to we, we don't have a, a, a information at the moment but i don't think there will be a match for our teams but i think uh, in between that's when we are going to be highlighted 
by Western Sydney Wanderers, but what it does is these matches are screened live all over the world, all of Asia, Europe. So it means our tournaments now, you know, getting more and more exposed to these uh, parts of the world. Okay. And uh, for many people, they agreed and they want to do it. But the question is, um, or a suggestion was like, how about we showcasing our own heritage, getting our own open ceremony and bring these people to watch us rather than going there. So what difference will it make apart from the television um, showing us worldwide and all of those? Uh, yeah, we, 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 this year we're going to do an open ceremony and closing ceremony. So we said, okay, no problem. This leg is taken, so which is good in terms of funding because it's, it's, it costs a little bit of money. We are just going to do a final, I mean, a closing ceremony, which we are going okay. to fund ourselves. And this one is an opportunity for us to showcase what we are to the world. Okay. Thank you, Bernard. Continue to stay with us. Uh, is Bernard the president for the African um, football uh, competition here in Australia? And he's talking to us about the tournament. We still have him. You can ask him a question on the comment section and also make sure you share this um, live so more people will watch us and ask some more questions emmanuel you've listened to bernard kinley and you are one of the um you know team you, you are representing one of the teams which is prepared in this tournament so what's your take from what bernard has been saying so far yeah and once more good evening uncle b and to viewers yeah out there. yeah and I want to, first of all I want to congratulate Uncle Bia and his team for short a good work that you're doing in terms of putting the community into good shape. And these guys are working tirelessly in making sure that our boys have a deserving atmosphere to play the sport that they love, which is soccer. Um in respect to that, in relation to this year, and there is something that could be said in terms of the key objectives, you know, that to give us the platform where we can maximize and showcase our talents. And it's another, so another atmosphere that we use where we can take those boys out of the streets. But in taking them out of the streets, we have to make sure that our culture and values are not lose or missing. Our identities are not easily thrown away. Because one of the key things that is affecting our boys is that they're trying to photocopy the Western world culture, forgetting where they came from. And if you don't understand their culture, you cannot be perfect in it. And this is what is affecting our borders within the system nowadays. They want to take a system that they were really born, neither raised into it, and they don't understand the details of the system. And at the end of the day, they're falling short in the mess. And so, like, especially you raise up a point with him concerning this um, opening ceremony. And it is good, like, as partners in the game, but it will have been nice for like from our own side, like we really showcase our African heritage from the let these people know who we are, what we are made of. It's an African tournament. It's a tournament that is meant for African. Even though like, like it's getting more multicultural, but like it would be nice just as you said, Magdalene, like we're able to showcase our culture in this for like for the open ceremony, like you can talk to the different teams to perform their, their cultural activities before we have the kickoff. It's if, if it's South Sudan that are playing anybody, <laughs> the rest of the other teams, you know, we don't play, we come, we rally, we give it the colorful presentation on Kobe Tosni. They will know who we are, what Africa is made of. <laughs> yeah, but for us like to go out there and like support Wanderers and, and, and in their game against Pet Glory, what about our own open ceremony? We need that color for it, for them to know that, oh yes, these guys are really doing great work. And this is how from there we started to see invitation will start to come for you, Mr. Bernard. Uh, we need you in the Australia Federation because from this type of structure you're doing, you can help us and do something in the football Australia. New so South we, we, for me, yeah. <laughs> not only New South, we want Tim Hawk because what you're doing is bigger for New South Wales alone, Mr. Banner. <laughs> yeah. Because this is the biggest region. <laughs> the biggest state. If you can organize us in New South Wales, you can organize everything for us in Australia. 
So we, we, we need to start looking at the bigger picture where we can showcase our talent yep. for the worldwide to see, not for us like hanging our talent into someone else's identity. We have our own identity that they should come and see and believe that, yes, what they are thinking is not who we are. And if we start looking at it that way, it will help our community to be more established and go worldwide. Okay, um, so uh, there's a question, some questions are uh, already on the comment section. Uh, okay. And then at, this one is saying it's called Musa. It's saying, um, can he name the teams or nations competing? Oh, you want us to name? Yeah, probably. Yeah, the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, we we'll, we we'll start with Kevet where um, uh, Emmanuel is representing the Zimbabwe, there's uh, Sierra Leone, there's Ghana, there's South Sudan, there's Sudan, there's Ivory Coast, there's Mali, there's uh, Madagascar, there's um, help me, um, Emmanuel. Oh, is there, there is, there is Egypt, there is there. South Africa. Um, yeah. South Africa, yeah. <laughs> we yeah, have yeah. Um, Tanzania, a new team coming in into the competition. Yeah. We have Central African Republic, which is Republic, Chad, yeah. and yeah. Uh, we have um, runners up Liberia. They yeah. lost last season, they were beaten <laughs> by South Africa. And, to and Togo, yeah, yeah we Togo. have Togo also. And um, yeah. there, is, there is Cameroon, there is um, uh, Mali, Mali, and yeah. then I think um. Those are the teams we should be expecting. Congo Brazzaville. Yeah, Congo Brazzaville, yeah. Congo, uh, yeah. uh yeah. Congo. Yeah. I think that's Kinshasa. <laughs> and Nigeria. Oh my, you forgot Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria, my brother. Hey. <laughs> Saga will fight me. <laughs> and, and Ghana, we have GH as well. Ghana. Yeah. For this year, um, I know we have Guineans following this page. It's a slap on your face. There is no Guinea. <laughs> <laughs> but they used to compete last season they were in the tournament but this season we don't know what's went wrong okay yeah. another question bernard is um saying does the african cup host other players outside of australia oh uh, it's up to the teams as long as they get them registered we don't know where we don't care where they come from from mars from pluto <laughs> we don't care because what we want is to you know sell this competition and we want it to touch every corner of the globe so as long as you are registered yes and um someone uh emmanuel this is for you nico of ivory coast former ivory coast president he's saying uh nigga yeah for us <laughs> 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 and i know but but nico you too you are from Sierra Leone, and you, you went <laughs> You went to the position of president of Ivory Coast. Uh, you know, there is one good thing about the Sierra Leoneans in this competition. They are in, except for Bernard's team, but Sierra Leoneans are in majority of the teams, you know. There are a lot of Sierra Leoneans who like football. <laughs> so we have a lot of players. Um, so uh, from Suare Kamara, what time is the opening ceremony on the 15th, Bernard? What time? Uh, the open ceremony will be at the halftime of the match. The match kicks off at three o'clock, so I guess around quarter to four. Okay, all right. So, I'm um, sorry, it's going to be around quarter to four. Okay, uh, we keep going with the show. Let's hear from some of the players yesterday after um, the media day. We talked to few of the countries that uh, we are present at the media day and this is what they have to say we just gotta go game by game not thinking too far ahead of ourselves we'll take one game at a time we've got a couple of new players i think they'll bring like more strategy to the team despite that it's not that many changes but everything else should be all right so far I like the new players that we've basically got in this new squad and picking up the draws, the team that we've basically got are going to be more competitive this year as well, as much as like we had four new uh, teams inside the draws, but we're looking forward to the whole competition itself. I think for this year, we're going to always have a plan to go all the way to the end, so that's what we're going to come and do this year. We definitely do have the squad, we've got some new signings, so be ready. We're gonna always meet Sierra Leone, it's an entertaining game, so it's good, our bittersweet rivals, we're happy to see them again, same expectation as always. <laughs> 
to come with a win. Uh, we have a good squad, I think. We have, we have big plans. I think we can go pretty far in this one. Uh, we've been training for a few weeks already. We've got our uh, tactics sorted. You know, the, everyone's buying into the coach's philosophy, so it's looking pretty good. Definitely. Everyone in the squad, they know their job. They work hard. I don't think you'll see a team working harder than us this year. To go all the way, always. You know, you achieve, go for whatever you can, you know, achieve everything. Uh, I think we're the dark horse here. No one expects a lot from us. But we're ready to put on the show. I think we have the quality too. There's a lot of top teams and we're gonna give it our best shot. I think it's all about self-belief and on the day. If we turn up on the day, we give it our best shot, anything can happen, especially in group stages. It's all to play for. We're looking to get out of our group. We've got a, a reasonable draw, but we're definitely looking to get out of the group. We'll take it from there. Yes, absolutely, we've got a lot of support and everyone will be there in round one. Uh, it's good. Um... This year we definitely have a stronger team. We're going to be, uh, I think, a big surprise. People aren't going to expect the team that we're going to bring. And obviously being Cameroonian, uh, it's going to be an honor to play for my team. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, this is actually my first year. Previous years, my dad was the coach and he also played. But I wasn't there because I was overseas. So this year is my first year. So it's really exciting. You know, good players. I think it's a good opportunity. You know, African Cup to, you know, represent your nation. Um, and yeah, just good level. Uh, good games and uh, I think we can do well this year. I really think so. We're gonna put our put our name on the map for sure this year. For sure. My right, message to the fans, Ale Leo. We are very well prepared, had some good sessions, have a good coach, we have good players, so yeah, we're ready. Of course, yeah, I won't say much but I think when the game day, yeah, our playing style, the sessions, yeah, we look for us. I'm very, very excited. Because this is a new team in the tournament, yeah. So we're coming all in, all in. We don't here to compete, but we're here to win. We're here to win. So I'm just seeing my team on the finals. Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, I've seen the very, a very big club in the tournament, South Sudan. But yeah, who cares? We're in there. We need to compete. We need to fight for everything. I think we're gonna surprise a lot of people. I think a lot of people are used to seeing a different team. So this year. Everyone just watch out, we're ready. Definitely, last year we got knocked out in the quarterfinals, so we're only just going up and up, so we're not looking anything less than that. So we're going semi-finals, we're looking to finals, nothing less than that. Our group, I think it's a, it's a, it's a strong group. I think the chances to get out are 50-50, but you can never underestimate anyone because you know every year is different, every team's different every year, so you know just gotta show up every game, make sure we do what we have to do, and make sure we get to the finals. Our expectations, strong competition this year. There's a lot of coming new teams, new players coming in, so you know it's gonna be a tough. Season. So message to the fans: come watch. It's gonna be bigger than ever, and let's go Zim. Fans well, are to hopefully make it to the final and win the cup once again. Well, we've been training really hard and it's all up to us at the end of the day. Only we can win, so we're going to try our best. It's been good. You know, the boys are fit, they look sharp. So yeah, we're looking forward for a good team. We're expecting to win. No team has won it back to back, but we're hoping to get it first. Um, my message to the fans is Come support us every game, and we'll try to be as proud. Um, I like the I like the, the culture, the environment, being around, you know, like like-minded people, and it's nice to see familiar faces again. Um, well, I previously stated that I think it's good, it's a good experience to face strong sides because it sets the tone for the rest of the tournament. And the boy, I've seen the boys. I think we're excited for the competition, and we're willing to go all out. Uh, the plan for this year is we do things differently. Hopefully, um, we we'll, we'll hope for better results, obviously. And yeah, we we'll look forward to it. Um, well, based on our training sessions and you know, the amount of turn up we're getting with the boys, and I think that it's gonna bring some energy a little bit to the squad. And I think that's good. Uh, a little bit of morale, seeing players coming in. You know, joining training and you know strong side so it gives us a little bit of confidence stepping up to the challenge so I think it's good. that's um
Sierra Leone and Andy Neat and Sierra Leone are on the top four again, James. <laughs> All right, uh, Bernard, you listen, um, the boys, they are very much excited. Every team, except for Nicolas' team, Ivory Coast, you guys were in on the media day yesterday, what went wrong. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll go to the Ivory Coast camp and get an interview with them. Um, so, Bernard, what do you make up of what the boys... Um, you know, actually say in this interview and um, are you seeing the excitement building up ahead of um, the 15th? I can see the excitement is building up and it's very pleasing. And I know this kind of excitement will be translated into the field where the boys will um, display their athleticism, their skills, you know, and the zeal. So we are in for a very good show this year. Everyone wants to do very well. Just like uh, you said, you've got a lot of Sierra Leone uh, players in a lot of teams. But <laughs> we want to lead the way in Africa, that Africa yeah. is borderless. We are one, you know, so we are borderless. We are borderless. No, yeah. no passport. <laughs> yeah, is, no passport. Yeah. But, but our team, our team, Leon Stars of Sierra Leone, <laughs> we are beating 4 0 by South Africa yesterday in a CAF in a FIFA sanction friendly, and that was yeah. because South Africa failed to give us visa prior to yeah. the match. They only gave us the visa one day before the match, and we went oh. to South Africa very tired. And our boys, we are playing tirelessly. Oh, okay. This is one what we want to end, even on our motherland. We just want to have a borderless Africa where everyone is free wherever they are. So we are leading here, you know. Yeah, football. so so yeah. when we get the borderless Africa in the next four years, I'll be the president of Zimbabwe. Yes, <laughs> that. that's what we want to see. That's what we want to see exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so Emmanuel from an um, an executive from I am um, Cape Verde, and you've also seen the boys, you've been um watching. Majority of the friendly matches yesterday we watched Liberia playing Togo. Um, what do you think uh, will be seen in this year's competition that will work differently from previous ones? Um, Magdalene, to be sincere, I think this year's competition is going to be a surprise to even the organizers of this competition. Because trust me, the momentum that this competition is, is having presently, trust me, we want the organizers to be ready. The boys are so pop up that they want to play, they want to showcase their talent. Because there's one thing that Mr. Bernard and his executive have done. They've really created a platform. And the boys have realized that within this platform, they can showcase their talent, they can be seen, and they can be recognized. So now everybody now is looking at this opportunity and they want to make use of it. And there's one secret now about the, the new South Wales. African Nations Cup is that. Whether you don't want to say it, it's a fact that people are proud not to be associated with it. If you don't play or participate in it for a year, it's like you've missed one aspect of your life for the year. It's part of our life activities now that every year, this is a must, we must get this done. And the boys are always jittery when it comes towards the African Nations Cup, New South Wales. So, Trust me, yesterday we watched um, 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 Togo and, and Liberia. It was an interesting match. Trust me, we see the boys, everybody's trying to showcase what he but has. You, you went there to spy after the draw, you realized <laughs> they were bad with playing Togo anyway. <laughs> you are a spy. <laughs> okay, um, so um, Emmanuel, um, so um, I will be hosting coaches. Maybe um next Sunday and subsequent um Sundays to come. But where do you think Cape Verde will end in this tournament? Last season um, we went onto the uh, onto the semis. Um, as as earlier in our early brain um, 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 interview, I told you like we are Cape Verde. <laughs> we are one of the greatest competitors in this, and the greatest and the biggest competitors presently in this new Southwest African Nations Cup. And I'll tell you, Magdalene, and they normally say fortune favor the fools and fortune favors the brave. Last year, we were not, fortune didn't favor us. If fortune will have favor us, 
we should be carrying on the gold medal. It's, 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 because it's it's Sabara not, knew it that we it's, had a formidable it's, squad. It's Sierra Leone with Juju. <laughs> he used food because UK Vap people take all of our players, fine, fine players, fine, fine players, Mr. Bernard. It is UK Vap people, they're fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, our expectation is really high, Magdalene and Mr. Banner. Yeah, we, we we want to win this tournament. That's our drive. No, no, that's, that's our goal. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. But maybe um, before I forget, I just want to thank Magdalene for coming up with this nice um, platform, and this is going to add a little value to our competition. And uh, we will sit down and see how we can um, work with you with this to make sure it also you know contributes to this competition as well this is this is excellent we want to thank you for coming up with such a platform no worries uh bernard i'm mm. always ready to support my life is sport my whole life i only go out because of sports i oh, only yeah. go out because of sports so oh, like nico so nico want to want me to do politics so i said no this guy like politics <laughs> <laughs> <It's sport. laughs> okay um, i'll be coming back to the africa cup now we want to discuss a bit about our match yesterday sierra leone versus south africa um let's go to um j borg at sierra leone we are beaten by four goals to zero after Hiccups with visa issue and all the team travel a day before the match and the boys look tired. It's not an excuse I'm making, but that's what the coach say. Uh, the highlight is playing in the background. And Emmanuel, uh, what's your take about the match yesterday? Did you watch it? Magdalene, um, after a long day yesterday, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go through the full match. But I, go, I went through some of the highlights, you know. Uh, we Sport is part of our life, even if we don't go through the full match. We'll go to part of some of the highlights. And from what I realized, Magdalene, from Sierra Leone to South Africa, it's something like 14 hours, 24 minutes, if you're going on the direct flight. And if you're not going with direct flight, you have to transit. You need something like more than a, a, a two days before you can settle down. And you know what it means? Um, jet flight, it, it, jet lag, it's always, it affected almost all the players in that pitch. The jet lag was the effect. The players were really tired. And because of the fatigue level of the players, if you observe, their concentration was poor. Take a look at the lines. There was so much of loose marking. The reactions of the player were very, very, very poor. Because why? They only did one hour of practice before they could go into the match. So for me, it, it, it's a disappointment on the side of the organizers. Football in every aspect should be taken serious. Because this is a friendly match, doesn't mean it doesn't have a, a FIFA ranking. It, this it will does. affect our ranking and position. Yeah, it does. You see? So losing 4 0 to South Africa, where we've never lost a match to them, for me, it's a shame on to us. Yeah. And in, we have five, the in five meetings, this is the first time we, we actually we're losing. lost. So for me, it's a disappointment on my own side, Magdalene, that the organizers never, never take this match into serious consideration. The South Africans knew what they were after. They knew what they were going for. And remember, they are also com uh, competing to host the Female World Cup. And for you to have some of this qualification, your, your, your ranking needs to be in a vital position. So these guys knows what they are doing. Let us not be as a tool nation for some of this event. Let's take each and every friendly match we are playing very serious. And soccer is not only one on the pitch. It starts the winning start from the backstage, the way you prepare your boys or your team towards the match. So our preparation towards the friendly match was was totally zero for me, Magdalene. We just went there and played for the name of Louis Go Play No More. But there was no structural arrangement for this game so uh looking at the next friendly with the congo on tuesday and a bulky of the squad already i'm um, flying out to casablanca in morocco where the match will be playing but you have the coach and one of the star players buya Toure, left behind because of um ticketing issues and according to what we gather so uh what do you think about that do you think um 
yeah, some people will say, okay, the assistant coach might be there. He might, you know, stay on the touchline or stand on the touchline to coach the boys or control the match if Kista didn't make it in time. But um, what's what, uh, do you think we are going wrong in in um, preparation because we just want to do things? Magdalene, you're correct. We are doing the wrong things. That's the wrong approach. You can never take your boys to the war front without a commander officer. Kista is a commanding officer. How can you leave him behind and send your boys to, to the front? You're just going to cause casualty. Magdalene, we need Kista. He's a, he needs to lead the boys. He's supposed to be there. So if you're leaving the head coach behind and sending the boys ahead, what are we after? That's not a good football structure, Magdalene. It's not on a match bank. Neither is it on a suspension. Why should he be left behind and send the boys ahead? It means we are not serious about the friendly matches. Okay. Let's hear from Kista um, from his post-match interview after the match. That's been very honest. Um, I don't think we did enough. You know, um, again, I'm the coach. You know, um, this girl come back at me and say, well, but the reality is, is there. You know, um, if we don't get it right in terms of our preparations, this is what's going to happen. You know, um, they look a lot more sharper, a lot more comfortable. We're just a lot of tired, tired players. It's understandable, but it's football. We just have to, hopefully, we, we, we learn from that. And coach, where would you say you'd like to see the team doing differently? Coming into this encounter, we looked at the height of the Sierra Leone side and we thought that was something you'd use to your advantage, but not quite. No, not today. Not today. Um, you know, um, again, you, you want to you wanna talk about the situation surrounding performances, then, you know, it's like you're making excuses. No, I don't, I don't make excuses. The reality is we just look very, we look very tired. And it's normal. You know, you can't, you can't have players living their base from Monday. You know, they hang about in hotels waiting for visas to come in here. You can't have people not coming here. You can't have, what do you expect if you, if you train for, for an hour, not even a, an hour, you know, in a week, you know, to come and play against, you know, a decent side, I, I don't know, you know, there's no magic about it. You know, we didn't, we didn't get it right in terms of our preparation, it shows. Your focus areas, coach, ahead of your next competitive encounter in the qualifiers. I hopefully, you know, we can we can start doing things the proper way. We can start doing things the proper way. And in there was John Kista, the head coach for Leon Stars. Uh, Emmanuel, he mentioned um, certain things that every fans have been mentioning, like tiredness, poor preparation, hanging in Ghana for several days before the team um, um you know, jet off to South Africa. A lot of people have lost faith in him, like they are calling calling the FA to fire him because they say they don't like his tactics. Do you think um, Kista should have more time in the downstairs? Um, Magdalene, Magdalene, this is a very challenging question. And for me to determine the fate of Kista in Leonster. <laughs> 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 it's a very challenging question, but I will tell you the truth. I think we need to start to give the tools to those that deserve it. Okay. With Mohamed Kalon in this position, you see a different national team. So, am I what are you saying? Mohamed Kalon can make the magic even if the team travel within 30 minutes before their match? And with this poor preparation? Uh, Magdalene. You can tell from Kista body language that there are issues within the, the, the effort that are bigger than him. And we need people that can voice out. Kista is trying to protect the job and is damaging his integrity. Guys like Mohamed Kalon, they can never keep quiet. When things are going wrong that would damage the integrity of him and that of the football, he will say it out. For Kista to be successful in his position, he has to learn to speak. Look at the like of Zenedine Zidane. When things are not going the right way, they decide to go away. Instead of them damaging their, their reputation. 
So if we could have like the likes of Mohammed Kalom or Musa Kalom, short things that are happening present in Magdala, you know, they won't happen. They will have a say, they will speak out the earlier. But what happened because he kept quiet, see the damage now it has caused to his integrity and that of the nation. We should not be losing 4 0 to, 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 to South Africa. No way. With this type of talent that the nation has, Magdali, no way. That should not be happening. That so was for Sierra me, Leone's worst defeat in 15 years. Now, looking at his previous results, a lot of people are saying he has, uh, is the performance of the boys on the aim wasn't clean. Um, we haven't seen clinical performances from previous matches. Is it that we defend or we go on the break? And um, people want attacking football. And there are a set of people who are calling um, the effort to fire him because of that. Do you think um, it's more of a tactical decision or people think because he's not talking, he should go? Um, my brother, I think it's more of a tactical decision. Because uh, me, 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 me. if you look at the, the way the home base are playing, trust me, it's much more better than the way the national senior team are playing. If you watch our national team, there's no better tactics, no constructive ball flow. Magdalene, I, I, it's hard to watch the way Leon start play. We cannot start a ball. I've never. It's hard to see Leon start start from the defense and build a constructive attack and finish. All we do is long crosses. But if you watch how the the, the home base are playing. You enjoy better football. So we need good tacticians to just step up to that position now. And we can see a better difference in the national okay. team. Okay, Emmanuel. <laughs> Emmanuel is for Kista to go. Gilbert is saying, yes, he need more time. The FA is the problem. And Lansana say, we need Calon to take over the national team for better. Uh, Kista needs to be sacked from Kelly F. Fofana. And uh, um, Koroma from Kelly again is saying Kista is not the right coach for our darling youngsters. Yesterday, performance is worse so far. What's a nonsense performance from the uh, uh, the head coach is trying to say? And um, from Musa, he says, Hopefully, we can start doing things properly. We have been hopeful since time in memories, but nothing <laughs> changes. The problem of our football is off the pitch not on the pitch because we have talent from all angles wow uh that's for musa sise and somebody say kista should go is not the right person from p shake i think emmanuel you got uh, a lot of people supporting your <laughs> what i posted in one of the whatsapp group yesterday was that um yeah. if things are happening and he's not talking then he's um is denting his own career as a coach for future exactly. appointment. You have to exactly. speak up because we saw issues like when uh, the FA appoint uh, was it Stephen Koha as the captain? Yeah. Yeah. He had that Kista didn't know about the decision uh, that they've dropped um, Zengele either. So, mm -hmm. and uh, some people are claiming that even the national team Kista is getting a lot of pressure from family, you know, football members for him to call players he don't want to call and all. So if these things are happening, he should be speaking up rather than keeping quiet and denting his own career. That yeah. will, you know, it will put a gray area in his in his CV for future yeah. reference. Uh, yeah. Let's see uh, more comments coming in. Uh, the guy don't deserve to coach Sierra Leone for Mohamed Issa Toure. Uh, so. Yes, it's it's a bit disappointing for um in the past 15 years that was our, our worst defeat. The last time was against Mali in Mali. 6 0 when was in New York was the coach. Um the man then beat I know it on Saturday. <laughs> alone again, never. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, since then, this is our worst. And even under Kista's watch, this is a worst defeat. But at this point, I want to um accept the fact that we prepared poorly and that was a key factor for getting that result yesterday. Okay, uh, moving forward from that, Emmanuel, what do you think the FA should be doing in preparing for such um, friendly matches or even CAF or FIFA matches that will be playing in the future? And Magdalene, the FA has a big body. If you take a look, that's why you have the Secretary General 1 and 2 and you have organizing secretaries. 
when these informations are being relayed to the secretariat, they should start preparation on set. First and foremost, they have to inform the head coach. And the head coach will, will give them the number of players he's going to require for that friendly match. Now, it is a, the, the responsibility of the FA to check this nation that we are going. Is it on free visa entry or not? If it requires for us to have a visa, they should start to put the application for the visa for all the players. It's as simple as that, Magdalene. And you, then you fix the date, to how many days these players are going to be on training, the, the, the hotels, the transportation, everything. You, and their allowance. You know, I don't want to be an advocate for the FA, but what I gather is that um, the South Africa FA assured the Sierra Leone and FA that they will take responsibility of the visa uh, process. And then um, in doing that, our FA was just trying to get the players tickets and all through support from the government. So when this happened, they were like communicating with the South Africa FA. They keep giving them confidence that they can travel and arrive in South Africa. You know the visa on arrival issue. Yes. And at the end of the day, it happens to be a no, no, no. When the team was in Ghana, they have to go through the right process to get the visa before they fly. So it's it has to do with the host nation as well. And for many people, they think because they are looking at their ranking and they know beating Sierra Leone will increase. So they, they do all these things just to discourage the Sierra Leonean players. But I think, like you said, our FA need to step up in terms of such situation. Okay, uh, let's move on from that as our host, uh, Bernard, might want to go to bed now. He's been very tired. <laughs> it's everywhere to ensure is the boys are okay. One thing I like about Bernard is not about the executive, he's always with the players. He want to see... When you see Bernard, I, I usually say he don't have a country in this competition, it's for everyone. You know oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank, thank you, Mark. Thank you so <laughs> much, Mark Glenn. He will even come yeah. to you and he will be like, you say that boy for Sierra Leone, it can be a yeah. very good tool. <laughs> and if we go to Kevad, I think Kevad have a good number nine. <laughs> so he's, he's very, very much uh, playing his role as a president and a chairman, and we appreciate you. I only work with you guys last year and i'm i'm sure i'm so much amazed with your your job and i'll keep it up and when i add that you we are uh, being elected elected i was so like uh is the right man there and uh um, so bernard uh with um the set of 20 teams now i know it's four groups five teams in each uh what's the playing format will look like uh, the prone format won't change this year, although we've got 20 groups. Normally, uh, when you have 20 teams, you want to go to the uh, round of 16. That's why it happens everywhere, even in the African Cup. But because of time, and already our season is very long, we're going to skip the round of 16 this year and go straight to the quarterfinals, then semis, then finals. We are also going to have third place uh, um competition to see who will come third and this year that competition is going to be done on a separate day because we have had issues with time okay. so we don't want the teams to complain about time we're going to have a third place there are playoffs for women as well so that day will be for women and men so the times will be very good for everyone so that's how the competition is gonna be like but i hope next year it's gonna take a more um normal format where we have the round of 16. okay so um this has it's up a lot of participants or competing nation that um uh, why five teams and then just straight to quarterfinals uh why not round of 16 and all a lot of questions has because but you've said it's because of the time frame so uh moving forward from that banner um the women's and juniors teams um registered this time and you mentioned six women team our country Sierra Leone but I'm always I like to bluff <laughs> our country Sierra Leone <laughs> won the tournament last season so who are the new teams coming in last season we beat we beat Morocco in first half five zero <laughs> And they said, when we went for the halftime break, they said, we're not coming in again. So the, the, the final end in first half. <laughs> yeah, we've got South Sudan, quite a formidable team coming in. And these other teams are 
dropped. We've got another Egypt team. It was there, but we've got another one with a different uh, management. So we don't have Morocco this year. We don't have the other Egypt, but we have another one with a different management. So, yeah. Then we have Zimbabwe, Ghana, um, Tia, Congo. And, yeah. Okay. So yeah. um, we saw the huge turnout last year, fans coming out. This is the only place where we as Africans meet in New South Wales every weekend. So you know, to, to, to do self-care, like a lot of us working in the community service sector, we have what we call self-care. We don't go to the gyms, we don't go to clubs, but what we do, going to the AFCON, you know, make us yeah. realize that we belong to a community. So what are you expecting from the fans this season? I'm expecting the fans to come in their numbers. We need them, we want them. They must come and watch uh, the teams play and we expect them to be cheerful, you know, we expect them to make as much noise as they can. We expect them to be disciplined as well because we need discipline and enjoy. Enjoy the day, yeah. Okay, so how important is this African Cup to the community? Like what Emmanuel said, everyone looks up to it. Without it, it's like we've lost a part of our bodies. So it's very important. <laughs> you know, we were able to squeeze it in the past two years, you know, because of COVID. Yeah. It, it, it's, our soccer is the only soccer which was played in this uh, country. It shows the passion we have. We forced it. We made sure we're going to play. We didn't want to be told that it's cancelled. We never wanted to hear that. Yes. Never. Yeah, okay. And so it shows how important this thing is. So, uh, Bernard, you know, in any situation, any organization, you face some difficulties. What are some of the challenges um, your organization is facing? Uh, resources, you know, both financial and human. Those are the biggest um, constraints we have, the biggest challenges we have. We need more resources, financial. We need more resources, human, yeah, and infrastructure as well. We hope one day the African Cup can have its own home. You know, oh, yes, yes, yeah. oh, yes, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. That would be great. Yeah. yeah, because you know, Africa. Yeah. Sometimes we got emotional, but when we are yeah. in someone property, we are like this. Yeah, and we yeah. need to be like this because if we keep fighting or like challenging each others, those people helping us now will stay back and it will affect the competition. That's why I said I'm amazed by your work because you've been trying to ensure a lot more with regards to security and people keep to the standard. So as we go in now, um, do you have any specific aim you hope to achieve in this year's tournament? I just want people to come and enjoy themself, themselves because like um, what we have always been saying, we want to see our culture being sh uh, showcased. We have been, been able to attract a lot of other communities. Some are playing as players, some are just coming to watch. This, this, this is the aim. We've always said we want them to come to us, not us going to them. So I expect to have more traction this year and get our tournament grow big and bigger. And people like you, Magdalene, you help us to you know broadcast us because <laughs> this technology we have here, technology is everything. So, yeah, I'll come, I'll come without my big bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, we, we, we want to work with you closely and we want people in Sierra Leone to know more about us, people in Africa and the whole of the world to know more about us and through people like you, the work we are doing. So we want to be broadcast more and more. Yeah. yeah, it's okay, Bernard, but I will need a crane because I don't want to stand where those South Sudan boys will be standing. <laughs> because Sierra <laughs> Leone will play South Sudan this season in, in the group. And we have um, Congo Brazzaville, we have, um, what else? I think Ghana. 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 And the yeah. pressure is like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we'll get, we'll get, get, you know, that crane we had last year. Yeah. yeah. That TV, uh, yeah, we have that crane for you to go on top and, <laughs> and do your job. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bana. Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate you coming. Uh, we hope to host you. But before you go, Emmanuel, what do you want to say? Yeah, Magdalene, on, on, to Uncle B, um, unforeseeable challenges. What are your plans for the unforeseeable challenges? Because for me, I'm looking at it like 
the way the trend and the, the, the momentum is going towards the African Nations Cup, are there any plans for a change of location for the final? Because we are seeing like the, the Wanderers facility is not enough to, to uphold the capacity for our finals. Are there any plans from the organizers towards that? Yeah, it's something we need to, to talk with our partners as well because we want to be with them. We can't leave them uh, or, you know, we want to work together. So it's something which we can discuss if need be because we want to be with them. So, yeah. And the yeah. area of so, refereeing, a lot of countries I know have been in this job for like over eight years now. When loser lose, it's the referee. <laughs> they don't care about what happened, especially the fans. Maybe the coach will be looking at technical aspects why the team... The, um, you know, face the defeat or was beaten, but for fans, it's the referee. But when they win, whatever decision, even if the penalty wasn't deserved, they will support the referee. So what are you doing in terms of controlling that area? Because last year we saw lots of people complaining about poor refereeing. Uh, the first thing we need to do on our side is to make sure we get uh, as many competent referees as we can so that even if teams complain, everyone will see that these referees are competent. We'll talk with the referees uh, coordinator as well to make sure this happens and whenever there is a problem the referee will report that referee to the, um, the referee's coordinator who will investigate and see whether it was a fair criticism. Also to the team management, we just want them to talk with their teams to make sure even if the ref maybe might have done something wrong they have to understand that to air is human and, and keep playing. As a sports person, you must keep playing, you know, and complain later if there is need to complain. But it's good to always keep playing. It's, it's a game which happens. Even the England couldn't go further in the World Cup because uh, Maradona clearly used his end. <laughs> hand of God. <laughs> yeah, hand of God. So these things happen. Unfortunately, if it happens against your team, you, you are bound to complain, but yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, Bana, thanks for joining us. We're leaving now to um, go and have a rest. We'll see you next weekend. And um, myself and Emmanuel will stay around a bit. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, Uncle Bill. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. All right, um, so Emmanuel, um, Nico, Nico, we're not getting team this year because you don't, <laughs> you don't resign as president. Say, will you be able to perform the traditional culture of the teams you represent this? Um, uh, okay. I think that question was for Bernard, but he answered already that um, the reason for going to Wanderers, I think me and Emmanuel have issues with that as well. Um, someone is saying, is Sierra Leone part of the competition? Yes, we are part of it. And um, this one say, Nico is saying, don't worry, we are coming. We know I will go to the wait for now. <laughs> the same man I will say, get to Nigeria. <laughs> man, I will say, they will get us on team. They're not getting any left for Nigeria. <laughs> I'm really excited to witness this show. Thank you, Ibrahim. And um, Nico say, Emmanuel, when they are talking about talk, you get it all, mate. <laughs> thanks, 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 mate. <laughs> All right, Emmanuel. So, what thing you anticipate for C? Like you to represent the other side, and then the other side, but working together. So, uh, what did you anticipate for C so far in the competition? Like I said, next week we will go host some coaches. Yeah, and I think first and foremost, Magdalene, you touch one key uh, and the quality of the referees the way we they get towards this competition, and that's one of the key things we don't affect the competition one way or the other because we see like the referees that most of the time banner than the bring into the competitions and the, the the qualifications of them are too low most of them are like retired referees that are most of them are just like new recruit and that we're the only ref within the pack levels so um for me we're able to get in like new south with referees for come up into the with competition is very challenging for the organizers. I think this the need for for sit back and talk to the referee coordinators like what and what do we need to do like to start to attract the new Southwest referees. You know, these are people that can that are able to manage the A League, the NPL level. 
And if we start for get short quality of refusing into we matches, you just see the quality and the rate of violence go drop. Because I'll tell you, Magdalene, most of the, the, the games that we will be playing, Mr. Baron, like, like a victim. I remember when we play against South Africa, we get up to like two, three goals that the referee dis disallowed unnecessarily. The linesman in flag, they don't say goal, the referee saying offside. We were like, ask the line. The line was saying, no, it's a goal. But he said, no, it's not a goal. But we petition at the end of the day, we don't see that referee there anymore in the tournament. So we want for see some of these things they happen. We, and we want only with the executive be more proactive. And in, 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 in when, when teams send the raise of the petition, the issues to them. Because if we have a man in the referee sector, they, you they see the violence that drop inside. And also in terms of response to correspondence, you know, if the organizers and they respond to correspondent on time, that's going to manage the level of violence. Like someone like we we suffer some issues in last year because there are some people from the memory refuse to respond to the correspondent on time. And at the end of the day, we were not at fault. Like some of we get some of the players that they were totally upset with us that no, we did the mistake. Well, we didn't make the mistake. We did the, the correct things, but like because of one way or the other, poor and let's respond to correspondent, make some of these players and before one forget GT. But when they end up for realize the truth, they will say sorry to us and we try for fix it back. So timing is very important at this time of this of the competition. And another thing we also for well, I make we take into consideration Magdalene. And we did talk about 50-50 now in the sporting world. The organizers and for Tefos step up the money for the female football. <laughs> That's my thing. I know. <laughs> That's my thing. <laughs> they also they play a vital role in, 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 in football, New South Wales. So therefore, they need to really give more respect and put better money for the female team. When they take part in this competition, not so for we know more the male, then save the sacrifice and time and the resources for take part in this competition. So we for expect them. And if we able to do some of these things, trust me, we receive better attention for we competition. This, this, but this year, if Una team not win the competition, but <laughs> 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 I got all team for win. If Una, Una allow South Sudan for win again, where we salon they take over because we salon they make much. We know we arrange quietly. <laughs> where you yams white, Koba, another challenge, they, they on we away, but Una. Okay. Oh. All right. A uh, quick one. Now we take some messages uh, from the the FA point of view. Somebody they say um, Gilbert. They say even if they bring Calon, it's the same. Um, from Pishek again. They say that uh, all FA is a scam. This other one says since Calon has taken over FC Calon, we have some changes. He has played three games and won all. So these are some of the changes we want to see in Leon Stars. National team, we are tired of explanation from Lansana Calon. Gilbert, again, um, this from Mohamed uh, Emmanuel Rollins, Barcelona man. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should give Mohamed Calon a try, let him take over since Kista is too soft in performing his responsibility. And Gilbert say that is for the FA to learn. Uh, Emmanuel, quick one from the comment section. Uh, waiting go be your roundup message with regards to Leon Stars. A lot of things. Every one thing from one small, they come up. You see that we'll go to the drawing board. <laughs> or <laughs> we now lock knock. We play oh, we try that lock. <laughs> lock so when when we go begin for going to games or matches with the expectations of the win and we win and we perform well rather than we come back and say now preparation then three words are poor preparation. We try being now lock no more or we we'll go back to the drawing board. You don't tell the area. And I feel say fans tend on to get disappointed. Or, like I say, I know I want to be an advocate, but on yesterday, partly it wasn't Kista's fault because prior to the preparation, it was very, very poor. And we see how the players is, they, you know, stay in Ghana for a couple of days, then go to South Africa, only train for one hour, and next day, the match. So, waiting will be a roundup message. 
And Magdalene, we can normally say that he that carries the crown must be of strong head. And from we don't look aside, you no know, more with the man in football, Magdalene, when with the fix friendly matches, not only with the communicates one week or two weeks ahead. So within that time, teams think you don't get maybe like five or six days for prepare. So if you want for cancel a friendly match, you get something like 48 hours for notice each other that uh, we can make it. So if you, if you cancel, you send me a match notification that I'm going to cancel it within eight or five hours. I'm still going to take my boys to the field. I'm still going to go on with preparation. Who knows, maybe in the next 30 minutes, you can show up. So like we get them plans sending Ayasu where we do work towards. So for national teams, as the head coach, you don't get a friendly notification. Now you're due to a responsibility for tell the FAC, I want my players in for reaching South Africa two days ahead of the friendly match. It must be done. So if you don't get all that note to the to the FA, then they work towards that goal. But the point is this like people then they compromise their position, Magdalene. And we for come up out of that stage there now. Let me begin to look at the bigger picture of the game, of the sport. You got to give some value to your office and people in the beginning expect you for who you are. That's what we need now. Still like waiting the like of Samueleto to do in South Africa, in, in, in Cameroon. Yeah. Come in and say, <laughs> this yeah. certain amount, I never begin pay players. See, <laughs> Alion, the fact is, uh, we don't even know the base payment. Even Musa Tomo, when I'm one of the most popular players, we don't buy the highest money, we don't know how much they pay them. They um, whether they sign player in a salon, the, the word is on this close fee. So it's like it's <laughs> synonymous now. When would they post? Before they post, when they post, the first comment can be like, always on this close fee. Now, I made the player the way they contract done. If they see yes. player go, he go sign for other team, he say another contract to the club because they are not bringing this fact to the media. People yeah. don't know, the fans they don't know. Player go just play for example, you see, I play for Lions this season. Then all of a sudden, when the season done, you see they say Edwards don't sign them. They go, yeah, he Lions go pull. Press really say that player, then our player will not left. And then the player go challenge they say if the if me and player let them pull documents, I'm not gonna no contract to them. So all yeah. these things we're gonna put in place for where there's a development, not only the pitch. Even our yeah. player that they take interviews, like yeah. I say, a lot of time we invite players and now we show them. Even when I create talk, so many they even reply you, so many they take call, so many they because they know one talk, they don't know how to face the media. So you get a lot of developmental. But the two way they affect is we know blessed with many academies when I did it for train players and two for do all and thing and they the knowledge. Mm -hmm. But yes. the people where they claim say then they sabi football management, a lot of them. They miss the point. So, Just look at how they, how they manage teams, how we they manage players in the salon, how they manage transfer. Could you imagine? Then go sign player in a FC Calon, Lions Pool Press release. Say that player, then I will get some more. <laughs> we are disappointed from what we saw. Yeah. <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah player was with us, and he has a contract with us. And look, last season, Prince Barry, they left Borangers for go. It's the Lions. Boring just in the player. It do with them. That's how the case end. So we need a lot of education in football and the development, not for just grab them or go play game. For B. Yeah. Yeah. If we're able to manage, we game back home. We know say the Premier League board, they don't appoint them and the same chairman and then give the responsibility. Mm -hmm. Preparation ongoing. But a lot of controversies there on players transfer. Look at Leon Stars, look at how they play. It's 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 so pathetic. We need for like we don't go through the language and now we understand it. Like who the right spot, it's yeah. a normal routine. We don't get yeah. the templates. Where's our low loss? We get the templates. So yeah. you, maybe we don't need for listening to the coach talk. We don't know what they can talk. If exactly. we win the game, also we get the templates. We just yeah. fix. Now the goal no more. If if the last game now be two one, we they change the goal. Maybe this game now four zero. So we get the template now, but let things then they change. We need to develop, you know. And uh, like people they say, Kista is very defending, and we need attacking coach. Yeah. So what do we for do to what start? That's probably the question. How for improve? How for get? It's good. The last season, 
we see players and score goals, the likes of Musa Tumbo, the junior Kobo Kobo, um, the likes of Ali Conte coming as a new breed from from a non-division side, Godrich come to Lions, a bang in yeah. the goal set. And not only they prove them locally, we see them internationally in a calf yeah. competition, score a trick, get the ball and bring them home. So we are looking at these boys. We have the talent, but how for manage them? Follow we not only for manage, but for manage with intelligence. Yes. The intelligence aspect now we lack now again. We get a lot of people where they put their money, that's for fact. Mm -hmm. People like the game in Sierra Leone, but yeah. how intelligent would they for manage the game? Law which me not you won't go far. People like you compare us alone with BB country there. Law with the level for us where OIA day. Yeah. A team yeah. in Guinea. Yeah. The team, the yeah. team where yeah. we goalkeeper they play for. See how structured yeah. they are. Yeah. Pass that they say an African team. When you go to Guinea, see how structured those teams are. Look the yeah. team where we will play with. We boring just play against the Algerian team. See how structured yeah. they are. We will reach that level, there, Manuel. So um, yeah. as we round up, um, any anything you have for say? Yeah, and um, this night we wake up call like for we 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 go to Zimbabwe and let we be let we be sincere in with duty calls, Magdalene. If people are sincere in their duty calls, trust me, we know the face shot an embarrassment. We, we nation don't go to soup. You know, diligence in service is a key. Whatsoever you do, do not only look at and say, but for you, sir, remember that there are eyes out there watching you and it's going to be on your resume, it's your CV. So let and, people take every service serious. And for the for the NSA and the ministry, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go look into the matter in other program. But the way that they treat other sport there for football, they make people feel that because football get boku space for getting for travel. Like football, they travel fast, fast. So you go get like four or five people from ministry and NSA where they travel always and you get boku per them. Rather than yeah. volleyball, cricket, tennis, and the other sport, they where they struggle with cricket. From yes. last year, male and female go to competition. Today they don't get them per them. Now then for go to another competition. competition. Money nodded. They didn't even get their attention. Beach volleyball went to Gambia. They win trophy. The girls them win trophy. The NSA and the ministry never even countenance them. No support until Afrisel. I saw pictures of Afrisel making a presentation for Tell and Tanky and Gideon something. It's bad. And you know what it happened? You know what it can when this race can go meet Leon Star. You got people where they text me privately saying that they're acting. Yeah, they're they acting. They exactly. know where they train, that they go do well, then they get the support where football you get. We yeah. all like football. You put all the sport now. I go pick football first. I pick cricket, second, basketball, you know, like that, volleyball, and I go tell you say athletics, and then I go come now to Boxing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ali Bolo them, you know. Ali Bolo them, they the box at stadium. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's sad. You get lots of sporting um, discipline where they do well, but then they get the attention where football they get, and that's true. It's it's really sad. And even football, let will be factual. The FSF not comfortable with the. The, the kind of support they can get at times because like the ministry and the, the NSA over do their work for them. And at that point, they get issues. And when it comes to the junior teams, Emmanuel, the junior yeah. teams here and I know, yeah. under 20, under this, under that, that's... now Boku Boku confusion can come. Can and come. if I the women team, now the worst, from under 20, then going to competition, female. That confusion, they look at over under from last year. They're not getting them for them. That the FA get for stepping. So even in football, the support is not enough. Only Leon Star, Leon Star, Leon Star. We need for the last time we already said they launched sports basket. Who's that the basket they now? No, no. They said the basket no, no. now for funding for the keep small small. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we the go now. We will come to now next week again with the show. And uh, the staff they also for satisfied with their salaries and avoid corrupt practices. From senior players, where just they wait for the international stage. We need we local talents where they really make them up now, yeah, for gain the exposure. So then self go gain the confidence and develop now the game. Yes, I'm Mohamed Sikama. Mohamed, an athlete, now a para athlete.
Where are yeah. you good at lifting? The lift, power lifting. Power lift. Because of the, the disappointment, the, the lack of support, you know, it just it's just there. It's so frustrating. Oh, we can keep talking about Salo, we know they're done, but there we go. <laughs> 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 we will come next week and hopefully we go show um we will try for look Tuesday how the game will go between Salon and Congo, the Al Congo, um mm. the next friendly match. And we tournament of Australia will keep updating Una out there. Until then, Mina Magdalene and Abideo T Manuel Una uh bye bye for this week and keep supporting this form as we want for making one of the best online sports platform. <laughs> Until then, Emmanuel, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye, then, Magdalene. It's a pleasure. Bye, viewers.